It's Madden NFL 24, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins on Sunday night. We are about 15 or so miles northwest of world-famous Miami Beach as we are set for football at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami Gardens. Tonight, we've got a great Sunday night matchup on tap as it'll be the Buffalo Bills taking on the Miami Dolphins. With Charles Davis, as always, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, you talk about storylines in this one. I think it begins and ends with our two quarterbacks, certainly two of the best in the business. And nowadays, I don't think you can get by for long periods of time without a top-flight quarterback. The way the game is played, with all the responsibility he has and how the game flows through him, if he's not on the top of his game, your team's not going to benefit at all. zone Deontay Hardy will bring it out and he will be brought down here inside the 20 good coverage as he's dropped at the 17 out comes the offense for the Bills led by their quarterback at six foot five that's Josh Allen I remember when he came out of Wyoming the big question mark could he be accurate enough to be a star in the NFL I think it's safe to say he's put all of us in our place and put those doubts to rest he can roll out and run it he can bomb it over your heads. Everything in between is an absolute nightmare for defenses to try and prepare for. And when he's on, he's an MVP caliber player each and every time he takes the field. Allen looking to throw it right at the outset. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now a guy who played his high school ball at Miami Central, it's James Cook. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next wave could bring him down. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turning around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge? Whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football. If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On fourth down, here's Sam Martin on to kick it away. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. It's taken to the 26. A 46-yard punt, 8 yards on the return. And it'll be Dolphin football. Here is Tua Tungavailoa heading out to lead this Miami offense. If you ask coaches at any level to design their ideal leader of a team, I think they're going to check every box with this guy. He's got the poise to handle responsibility. He stays calm under any kind of pressure. And he brings out the best of his teammates each and every week. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and ten at the 34. They'll run here with Raheem Mostert. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. Veteran running back like him, we've seen a lot of those chunk carries in his career. And that's why you don't just look at his birth certificate and decide when a guy is done, right? Because you know as well as I do in this league, as soon as you hit 30, 
They're looking to let you go if you're a running back. Sometimes there's a little tread left on the tires. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. They have three tight ends in that formation. That's almost a universal sign that they're planning to run the football. But how about the defense there? They met force with force and caused a stack up behind the line of scrimmage and threw him for a loss. On second down, Mostert. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. I think we can safely say that those types of plays are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. An extra defensive back here for the Bills on third down. Tua sets up to pass it. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there. And now fourth down. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. And yeah, the punter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And this one hits at the three and then bounds into the end zone for a touchback. So here come the Bills out for their second drive. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Here's Allen on first and ten. Little pitch and catch to the tight end, Knox. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two. And it brings up second down. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. From the 22, here's second and eight. Allen now looks to throw. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. And Diggs will have a Bills first down as the tackle made right at the 30-yard line. It's a gain of eight, and it'll wind up moving the chains. So first and ten now from the 30. First down, here's the run with Cook. To about the 33-yard line. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Snap comes at one, and it's Allen. A short throw pulled in by Kincaid. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred a defense. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. Got a man. That's Trent Sherfield. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. The Bills passing game. Getting them down the field. They've got another first down. Nothing flashy there. The slant to the slot. Oh, and the frustration for the defensive guys. Because it's a quick play. And you know it's going to be a bang-bang play in terms of the throw and the catch. And then he's able to absorb the contact to complete it. Allen to throw once more. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Oh, man. For him to be that wide open and drop it. 
Sometimes you have just too much time on your hands, right? You end up thinking way too much, and your hands get shaky. And yes, he's a tight end, but that's a catch he should have made. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Allen. That's complete to Davis. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right and then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. Now at third and two, they're going to elect to throw with Allen. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins' 23. Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. And that is caught. It's Davis. Touchdown, Bills. Gabriel Davis, 23 yards for the touchdown. And the Bills put the Knights' first points on the board as they take the early lead. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast, but a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys? Extra point by Bass, up and good. And that makes the score 7 nothing. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Defense got the better of them last series, forcing a punt. See if they make a few changes in the game plan here and try to get points out of this drive. First and 10. the ground it's Mostert to start the drive and he'll take it forward for about five up to the 28 yard line they'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here and if it's a long play so be it but the main goal get a couple of first downs run some plays run some clock allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score second down here's Mostert again and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Looking to pass to him. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. So no gain on the play, and it's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Now Tua on the bootleg here. That one complete to Hill. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Going to the air. Tug of Iloa. 
Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. Waddle's first catch, good for a first down. I don't care how many times we see it, I still get a kick out of watching quarterbacks and receivers do the pass trick in pregame warm-up. But I always remember that when we go to practices, we see that after practices as well. They really tune it up, don't they? They tune it up. They know why they do it for these situations. First down. And they build that trust, and that's why they're able to find him in this type of a situation. Motion man is Barrios. And they're going to give it to him on the jet sweep. And that is well read there defensively. He was looking to use his speed to get the edge, but they said no way. That's the danger, Charles, of running plays like this for your wide receiver. They can hit big or they can be duds. Yeah, you're exactly right about that because if they're forced to try and go around defenders behind the line of scrimmage, sometimes you can give yardage in order to gain it. But in this case... Yeah, the pressure gets there and Tua is going to be taken down. That was Jordan Poyer, the safety in for the sack. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it. It's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. That is caught. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 29-yard line. That was no third and two. That was third and 16, but they get the conversion anyway. And partner, they're locked in man coverage out left, and they end up running a crossing route. Rounded it a little bit more than a slant. He's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. On first and ten, it's Mostert. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Here's Tua. It's going to be incomplete. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches have told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Two are going to throw. Seven yard line. Dropped for a loss of seven by multiple defenders. How about that? One of the so called little guys putting the pressure on. That was a strong safety. When I was in college, we often called that a lightning blitz. Jason Sanders for the Dolphin field goal. A 54 yard attempt. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second quarter from Miami. It's the Dolphins with the football as they've got it with a fourth down coming up. So now on comes the field goal unit, and wow, this is no ordinary try here. And he put enough leg into it, but it's well off to the right and no good. And this will stay at a seven-point game. So a long drive, 11 plays all told. But in the end, they come away with nothing. And what can you do from an offensive standpoint except pat your kicker on the head and say, get him next time. Gabe Davis and the offense getting the football back here. Previous series, definitely a focal point. Three catches, the touchdown grab. As a DB, your former DB, is there a number of catches on a drive you're like, oh, he got the best of us? I'm not sure there's a number, but there's a great feel. And what he did on the last drive, yeah. <laughs> Especially with a touchdown. Yes. You're never way, happy. You're exactly right. The way he capped it off. So you feel that at the sideline, and now you're... Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. 
and picked off by Jalen Ramsey. And the Dolphins are going to take possession here at their own 47-yard line. So this defense coming up with a takeaway, and maybe that's something that can bring a little life to that sideline. Well, I don't want to say that they've been sleepwalking through this first half because that's simply not true, but you're right. We haven't seen a lot of fire from these guys, really, on either side of the ball. So maybe that's the catalyst that they needed to get them back into this game. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 on their side of midfield at the 47. To his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. And he'll be brought down right on the 50. A gain of three. Well, it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. They'll run right side with Mostert. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. 53 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. We often poke a little fun at running backs past the age of 30. Oh, they're getting old. They can't run anymore. Well, he's showing past the age of 30, you can still have some nice runs like that. You certainly can. And I think that we're starting to expand our definition of old running back. Because it used to be as soon as they hit 30, we want to get rid of these guys and go to the younger guys. But now that the guys are taking such great care of themselves, as you pointed out, you can still get explosive runs at any age. Fair to say it hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills' 15-yard line. And they're going to get a timeout as they deal with an injured player, and it's Tyreek Hill who is the man that's in some discomfort right now. We'll get an update when we come back to Hard Rock Stadium. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Now Tua. Touchdown, Dolphins! Tua finding his hold out of him, a teammate, Jalen Warner. And the Dolphins are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Well executed there offensively. Defense looked a little confused, but he found his receiver, and that looked good for six points. And the payoff we just saw there tells us how many times they ran this play in practice over the past few weeks because they executed that flawlessly right here on game day when the situation arose. Jason Sanders now for the extra point. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it was finished off by a Jalen Waddle touchdown. Turn sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Yeah, here come the Bills. And for this offense, Charles, you got to think kind of crucial here to put something together on this drive because remember last time out, they threw the interception on the very first play. And you can't afford to let this defense keep building any more momentum. They're playing awfully well, and they're awfully confident right now. To me, it's time to attack and take some of that momentum back, but make sure you're selective in doing so. Understand where you want to throw the football and make sure it's open before the ball leaves your hands. It's complete to Diggs. 
And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. But one of the ways that quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. Cook up the gut. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Now, that was an excellent run. And when you see that happen, that's when you're seeing guys doing their job and then some people doing a little bit more. Offensive linemen and tight ends, they're expected to block. But the wide receivers, all they want to do is catch passes. So when they block on a big-time running play and create extra space, you've got to hit the jackpot there. Ball start. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Still second down. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Cook following the penalty. And he'll be taken down at the 44-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. It was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. So now first and ten as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 44-yard line. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. It'll be a gain of five, and it'll be second down. It's a gain of five. Brings up second and five. At the 39-yard line. Here's Allen to throw it. Setting up the screen for Cook. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 11 yards and a Buffalo first down. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. On play action, Allen. And this is incomplete. Very lucky to get that one back. That nearly picked. It's second down now. Well, nearly another interception there. That would have been two drives in a row with a pick. He's got to start taking care of the ball way better than what we're seeing. Interestingly, that throw was probably worse than the one he threw the interception on last drive, but fell incomplete. On second down, Cook. Five yards. Now it's third and five. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. The Bills on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Now Allen. He's got his target. That's complete. Touchdown. Allen on target there to Stephon Diggs. And the Bills have taken the lead. As a fan, is there anything prettier than a well-executed post route? No, it's a thing of beauty, especially when it's done like that for a touchdown. Uh, the throw, the catch, and how about the run after to get it to the end zone? Bass on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drive in total eight plays. And it's finished off by the touchdown by Stephon Diggs. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Barrios going to bring this out of the end zone. And here 
comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. And the ground game's been good, but they're losing here in the second quarter. Can they use that ground game maybe to work the air attack a little bit more? I think so, because now you can throw play action off of being able to run the ball effectively. And oftentimes, you might want to just swing your back out of the backfield, get the ball in his hands in open space, and just don't get totally away from running it because some of these runs now, they may pop bigger as the game goes along. Yeah, they've been good with the run so far. Two and now on first down. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. It'll go as a gain of four, and that'll make it second down. A gain of four. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Got a man complete to Cedric Wilson. And he's knocked to the turf right there at the 46-yard line. 18 yards on his first catch of the game. It's a first down. And maybe that touchdown on the previous drive has re-energized his offense a little bit. They've been kind of sluggish until then. But they're showing signs of life here. And they get good yardage that time and a first down. They fake the handoff. Now Tua. Open man downfield is Waddle. He's got it. Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? Despite writing it down on my notes, I never give enough credit to the offensive line, and we have to here. The protection, that's what made this play a success. Quarterback had to wait for his crossing route to develop, and that takes a little bit of extra time. Excellent job by the big fellas up front. So the big play gets him all the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and 10. Tua setting up shop to throw again. He's got a man. It's his tight end. That's complete. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Up the middle they go with Mostert. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Third and two. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play. Stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. Got a man. It's Waddle complete. And he takes it inside the 10 to the 8 before he's out of bounds. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. Set the man in motion too late. This is going to be a delay. Delay of game. Offense. No. Well, the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Still first down. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. Tua sets up to pass it. They make a good bit of that yardage back as they're set up in much better shape now for second and goal.
Now they'll try and set up the quarterback draw here. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Well, that's going to bring up a big call now because he's unable to make the play himself on second down. Now you just have to wonder, will they keep the ball in his hands on third down? A couple extra tight ends are in, third and goal from the one. On play action, here's Tua. Dancing to his left. So no sack, he gets back to the line of scrimmage, but it will still bring up a fourth down. Like it's been this negative as he just got back to the line of scrimmage, but when you really analyze it, he took away a big play for the defense, made it an uneventful run because he avoided a sack and didn't lose yardage. The offense is staying out there. Here we go on fourth and goal from the one. They'll try it now with Mosty. And he takes it into the end zone for the Dolphin touchdown. Raheem Mostert taking it in from a yard out. And the Dolphins' decision to go for it pays off with six points. Well, this defense held out as long as they could, but ultimately the running game wears them down from the one-yard line. And that gets set up throughout the entire drive, doesn't it? And when you put those big bodies and determination into that carry, the end result, touchdown. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and we are tied at 14. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. And they'll be backed up to start this drive as he's taken down right around the 15. Back onto the field now comes the Bills offense. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. That escapes the sack. And he goes down. It's a sack. They get him back at his own three-yard line. Sacked by Andrew Van Ginkle. But that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks. We have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Now then, after the sack, it'll be interesting to see what they have planned for second and 23. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. Back around his goal line. Here's Allen. Well, as we get ready for third down, let's go back and recap here. The sack on the first play of this drive, that threw a wrench in what they were trying to accomplish because they were compelled to throw the ball on second down. A running play was not in the works. And that incompletion set up another passing down here on third and long. Facing the prospect of a punt from their own end zone, they need some cushion. Let's see what they can do on third down. They'll try to middle with Cole. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. Sam Martin now as the drive goes backwards so he's on to punt it away and he's able to get it out of there and here comes Berrios it's a 45 yard punt but a decent return there of nine yards and the Dolphins will begin this drive in great field position first and ten out comes the Miami offensive unit now they get set to take over 
the last time out, they had to march almost the full length of the field for their touchdown. So here, much easier, Charles, with this better starting field position. I love your sarcasm, but I love even more your observation because, look, what they did last time out, now with a shorter field, they should have a lot of confidence that they're going to put more points up on the board. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He did a fine job there not hitting it before the ball arrived, and I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Looking to pass to a Got a man, it's Barrios complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Tua looking to throw on third and two. And this pass broken up. And the contact well timed there, and now fourth down. He was trying to get that one out to his running back out of the backfield, but that one was red and timed perfectly, and they were able to break it up. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And they won't try and pooch it. It's a fake. And this is incomplete. A huge gamble, and it does not pay off. They fake the punt, it doesn't work out, and the Bills are gonna get the football back. The Bills offense back out onto the field. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is gonna be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. And Cook has it, left side. And he'll be out of bounds after getting this one across the 40. Now, I know it's an emotional game, Charles. You can't do that. And when you get into your film sessions and you argue your case with your coaches, that's exactly what they say at the end. You just can't do it. It costs your team. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Throwing now is Allen. That pass complete to Deontay Hardy. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. They'll wind up getting seven on the play. And that will bring up second down. To the air, Allen. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. A yard all they need, but it's third down. Here's Hallett. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. That close on third down, I think everybody probably expecting a run. Instead, they go to the air on third and short yardage. I realize this is a passing league, and they're liable to throw the ball on any down and distance. But that short, I do question the call. Run the football and pick it up. Allen will look to throw for it on fourth. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down, and the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. And he'll have a tough time living that one down. It's one thing, Charles, to drop a pass. It's quite another to drop it on fourth down. And so many teams work on that in terms of locking in on those key downs. You know, I've seen, I've, you know, you and I have both been to practices where we've seen 
Hey, third down situation. Big third down alert. Lock in here. Fourth down play. Make sure you focus just a little bit extra. It didn't pay off in that situation. Two and now on first down. Yeah, he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way. A dominant pass receiver that can break down any defense because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. And two are going to slide to a halt, but he will have the first down. That one goes for 13 yards, and it moves the sticks. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. That's going to be caught by Waddle. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Now Tua. And he completes it to Wilson. That's impressive to me because while it was a pass play, they still rallied to the football like they were filling running lanes, and they were able to put the receiver on the ground. Tua, a final shot before half. Throwing left side here, and it's complete. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. So we've hit halftime all even at 14 apiece. As we go up to Orlando now and hand it over to Jonathan Coachman with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Take it away, Coach. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They're all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. The Dolphins getting set to go back to work here in quarter number three. This offense ready for the first drive of the third quarter. Well, quarters number one and two entertaining. We saw some good offense points put up, Charles, and all tied on the scoreboard. And it sets us up for what could be a really fun second half because we've seen both sides score almost at will here in the first half. And now, here in the second half, getting the ball first, you've got to think, hey, we can go out and really run our offense the way we did in the first half. But if I'm a defensive player, all I'm thinking is, can I make a play to really help out my team and break this streak of offense? And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Off a of play action, tongue of Iloa. And he'll get this into the hands of Hill, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 
Two catches in the first half. Now he's got a third here, and it's good for a first. Well, certainly as a fan, you get a little bit nervous when you see him make those kind of throws. But they work on that in practice more than we know. And most of them now know their limits and know what they can get away with. And there's a completion right there. Now A-Chan on first and ten. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That good for 22 with a first down. Not too shabby for his first carry of the game. That's exactly what most teams are looking for. A really good change of pace back. So first and 10 now in Buffalo territory. Down at the 33. They go back to the ground, this time Moster. And he'll get this just inside the 30-yard line. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. Tongue of Iloa to throw on second down here. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. H.M. gets it from the gun. Dances by, and he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Devon H.M., a 12-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive in the second half. And on his way to the end zone, shedding the tackle, he would not be denied. That's what's called finishing the run, making sure you power your way through it. One-on-one -on -one tackle. No running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Sanders on for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-14. That time, a six-play drive. And it was Devon Achan who finished things off with a touchdown reception. Touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. So here's the Bills offense now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. But Charles, you and I said in intermission, feels like we're set up for a good second half. Well, the other side scored. Now it's up to them to answer. How do they respond here with their first drive of the second half? Well, bottom line is they just saw the ball go in the end zone against their defense, and they saw what good offense looks like. They believe they've got a good offense as well. Run the best plays you've got to the top performers you have and try to move that ball down the field for an answering score. Call it a gain of six on the play, and it's second down. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and four. Here's Allen to throw it. Uh, quick throw there, but it's going to be incomplete. He's a little trigger happy right there, and it turned into an ill-advised throw into the zone. But we know he has confidence. He'll throw it any place, any time, anywhere. And that time it fell incomplete. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Allen gonna throw. And that is incomplete. It's safe to say he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. 
Fourth down now, but he's fortunate on that one not to have another turnover on his ledger. Here's Sam Martin now as he's on to punt for Buffalo. Averaging 50 yards of boot so far as this one's away. Here's Berrios. It's a 49-yard punt, but subtract nine there for the return. And it will be first and ten as they take over. And the Dolphins getting set to go here. That last drive, it was a good mix. Run, pass, run, pass. Defense on their toes. And what really helps out in a big way is when you're doing the run-pass mix and everything's working, that means that they're guessing wrong every time on defense. They think you're going to pass when you run and vice versa. I would continue that, and when they finally draw a bead on you, maybe you mix it up a little bit, a little play action and throw the ball. And will they maintain that balance? Time to find... And that's caught inside the 30. It's a big play there for Miami. 46 yards. And that seemed to me to be all about trusting your receiver. No doubt about it, because when he put that ball in the air, I will guarantee you everyone who's watching this game right now thought, that's up for grabs. But this is a lot of practice time. As you mentioned, a ton of trust. And he knows how good his guy is. So to him, it wasn't up for grabs. To him, it was a big play waiting to happen. A run with Mostert up the middle. Knifes his way forward here, but just three yards on the play. Second down. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. From the 22 now, here's second down and seven. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. Getting this out to the flat, Mostert. So just three yards on the completion there. And it brings up third and five now. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Out of the gun on third down, here's Tua. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. They'll bring a receiver in motion left. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Braxton Berrios, a nine-yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins have taken a two-touchdown lead now. Well, we've talked about it before. You know, this jet sweep, something a lot of teams like to run nowadays, and this one winds up in the end zone. And it is all about creating different ways to get the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And wasn't it interesting that part of this game Head coach told us, I saw this sitting in my chair watching a Tuesday night college game and decided to implement it myself. Extra point up and good by Sanders. And the lead now up to 14. After the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, and they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 24. 
throwing to start the drive. Allen. A throw left sideline falls incomplete. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's second and ten. the gain and it'll bring up a third down. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Throwing his Allen on third. And that will be incomplete. Applause for the defense there. They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. Here's Sam Martin now. He's been terrific so far. Pulled in at the 24. Now a hit and a loose football. Now this is picked up by the Bills. And they will take over. 29-yard line. Was hoping to make a play there on the return with his speed. Instead, he makes a play for the other side. Yeah, and how many times have we heard... And now before the ball changes hands, they're going to take a look at this just to make sure that they have it right. Now the question, was the knee in fact down before this ball comes loose? And is the video convincing enough to overturn it? A lot of factors here. Remember, you also need clear possession of the football afterwards. This is a tough one to overturn. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. First down Miami as they get set to start the drive. A long drive last time out for this offense, Charles. If you remember, they started basically in the shadows of their own end zone, marched it down the field, and a lot of that was through the passing game. And partners, a former defensive back, I'm having almost a physical reaction watching what's happening right now, but let's give credit where it's due because they've done an excellent job moving the ball through the air. Secondary getting picked apart pass by pass. Obviously, they need to make some adjustments there on the back end. Yeah, because offensively, we know that they're not going to be shy about throwing that football. Second down, here's Mostert again. And Mostert going to pick up the Dolphins' first down as he gets this up past the 40. Now, that's the way to do it. Hand it to someone with vision and good footwork, and they add a little, little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. Once again, it's Mostert. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. 82 yards rushing for him now to this point. From the lineman to the guy running with it, that was a well-executed first down by the offense. With two shots left to get the first, you can get a little aggressive here on second down if you want and try for some bigger yardage. This second and four. Now they'll throw with Tagovailoa. Completes it to the tight end, Smythe. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 41-yard line. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. That's another beautiful throw right there. Gets it to his man right in stride. And I think that throw kind of exemplifies what we've seen from this offense throughout this game. They've been in rhythm. They've been sharp. They've been on it. And they pick up another first down there. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Offense was moving it a little bit, had them back on their heels, but they earn a brief pause by forcing the incompletion. That gives them a quick chance to regroup and try and mount a stand before they're backed up even further. Second and ten. Here's Tua. Throw right side, going to be caught here by Waddle. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver that has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. 
And again, it's Tunga Bailoa. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. So how would you describe that one, partner? What would like right there, getting that first down, blue-collar type football? Yeah, only needed three, got four, just enough. I like workmanlike. I think it's pretty cool myself. Everything doesn't have to be high glamour in this game. Here's Tonga Bailoa on first and ten. A short throw there, that's to Smythe, the tight end. And that's good for a pickup of ten yards. And they'll be left with a second and about a foot. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Now a give to Mostert running right. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, this has been a long drive. In fact, it's eaten up a good chunk of the third quarter, which is precisely what you want when you're playing with the lead. You control the football, you control the clock, and impose your will on the defense. On first down, Tonga Bailoa. And that went too far in front. He couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Quarterbacking 101. Never force the ball into double coverage, especially not this close to the goal line. The windows are so tight, you just don't want to force it in there because it could be tipped up and picked off. Third quarter from Miami. This is second and 10. Out of the gun, here's a give to Achan. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. They're pretty good spot right now with a convincing lead. I think this is where they put on the boxing gloves and start to try and pound them into submission. And the offensive line, they've controlled this game. I don't see why that trend would change now. Third and eight. Going to the air, Tonga Bailoa. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He was waving his arms, won the football, but he dropped it. And that reminds me of a story you told me from your days at Tennessee. We don't need to mention the other guy's name, but when he dropped an open pass that you blew coverage on, what'd you say to him? Yeah, it's really not right since I blew coverage, but since he dropped the pass, I said, well, maybe next time he'll just walk it out here and hand it to you. Would that be easier? He wasn't, real, th he wasn't real thrilled with that that's answer. <laughs> Right now, Charles, you know, this is about building that lead little by little, and they're able to do just that. And it gets them past the key number of 16, so this is now a three-score lead. Not time to exhale just yet, but that might prove to be an important three points before things are said and done. to the field goal. Here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bills ready to take over. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand They've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. Here's Allen on first and 10. He's got this one complete to Sherfield. And he's going to get a good gain of nine here up to the 34. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. Back now in Miami. The Bills have the football, but they trail here as we begin quarter number four. Now Allen. Throwing quickly there, but it's incomplete. 
Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. An effective seven yard third down conversion. And that's a gutsy call there on third and short because that's a play that's got a good chance of being blown up in the backfield for a big loss of yardage. But nice job out wide to gather in that screen pass uses blockers well and pick up the first down. Allen to throw once more. Over the middle, it's complete. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Bills passing game, getting them down the field. They've got another first down. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Allen now on first down. A quick throw there is incomplete. Well, they've been back on the heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Now a second and ten. To throw, it's Allen. And his throw here is incomplete. And now offensively, it's third and ten. And I'm just thinking to myself, actors always say, what's my motivation before a big scene? Right now, the play caller is thinking, what have I done before that's worked well that I can go to right now? Yeah, because they were pretty successful in the first half scoring points. Haven't done anything so far here in the second half. Again, they'll throw with Allen. Throw there, going to be incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. One final try here for Allen. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. The Bills drive stalls out on fourth down, and the Dolphins' defense is able to hold. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth, and we've seen them do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. Here's A-Chan to start the drive. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. They complete it to Hill. And he's out of bounds just before the midfield stripe at the 49. The result, only four yards there on the play. And now third down and six to go. They hand it off to Mostert. And he might have got this across midfield, not by much. They'll mark it down at the 49. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up a fourth down. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. The Dolphins will send out the punter now. On, we think, to punt, though he's faked it earlier, but he was unsuccessful. And this one hits at the run, continues on into the end zone 
for a touchback. Buffalo offense back out ready to go. Even though they were able to force the punt defensively, still a big hole to climb out of, especially at this late stage of the contest. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Allen. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Give him credit for excellent coverage, tight coverage. They're doing a lot of things that we talk about in basketball. They're causing disruptions in the passing game. And as long as that continues, it'll be tough for them to gain any momentum throwing the ball downfield. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. Allen. And he is going to lose yardage here. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. They were there, and they tackled him for a loss. The Bills on third down. They're right at about the league average, 40%, 4 for 10. This is third down and 12. To the air, Allen. Toward the sideline, intercepted. Picked up by Xavier Howard. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock, had to throw it. Dolphins offense returning to the field. And after the interception, they are sitting in an even better spot with the ball and a comfortable fourth quarter lead. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. On the handoff, this is Moster. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Well, that's a pretty good drive starter right there. And I don't know, partner, if you're even thinking about sitting on the ball right now. They may just want to run their regular offense. In plus territory. And, and as an offensive coordinator, you don't want your team to go into a shell, do you? No, you really don't. Because as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it's real hard to put it back on and mash it. Because once everyone's emotions come down, it's hard to start them up again. So I think you may want to keep them going again. Brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. That gives him 98 yards in this game, and he's got to feel pretty good about that, but the entire offense does. The big thing, though, Brandon, they've got to get to 100, though. You think he knows he's at 98? I think someone has told him by now, and here's the thing. Getting to 100 or more is tangible evidence that you've had a nice day running the football, and that's what his offensive line wants for him and for themselves. Just a couple on the ground there. That's going to bring up third and about six. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. And the Dolphins are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. Starting to become a tough spot for this defense. You're down fourth quarter, looking a little fatigued maybe on that side of the ball. Partner, we've seen this before, haven't we? Because every coach we've ever talked to says body language is important. And now you're seeing guys with their hands on their hips, they're bent over, hands on their knees. And the offensive guys are just saying, let's just keep running it out. And we've got them now. Now that sends him two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. It's second and goal back to the eight-yard line now. Looking to pass. Tua. 
Uh, he's got it. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. The ball mere inches from the white line on third and goal. Tua sets up to pass it to the end zone, but it's incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. And they're going to go for this thing. They're not going to leave anything to chance. They're going to roll the dice on fourth and goal. They'll run with Mostert, and he'll wind up being knocked back to the three-yard line. They're turned away on fourth and goal. And the Bills' goal line stand is going to get them the football back. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule that if someone does it to them, you won't hear a peep of protest out of them. That's just who they are. First carry for a Central Florida alum, Latavius Murray. Now he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. And that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down jubilation, aren't you? And yeah, now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try to get something cheap right here over the top. And able to get it here to about the 16-yard line. Four yards the pickup, first down. But they certainly had success throughout this contest, getting him the ball in the passing game, and there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it, and no adjustment has been made to take it away. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. On the throw, led him too much that time. It's incomplete. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice, or maybe even routes versus air, because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Back to the air on second down. It's Allen. Little pitch and catch to the tight end. Knox. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. It certainly feels like there are more stars at the tight end position than there were even 10 years ago. And I think it's become more of a glamour position because of the ways it can hurt a defense, and guys want to be involved. They can be in line, close to the line of scrimmage. They can split out like receivers. But hands, route running, speed, and some toughness to go across the middle, you put it all together, you get a heck of a tight end candidate. A pickup of five that time and a first down. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon, and it looks like they're gonna utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? On first down, Allen. Man open downfield is Diggs, he's got it. And they've got it well across midfield, down to the 40 before it's all said and done. Give him 30 yards there. To get back in this ball game, big plays are going to be necessary. And here's one right on cue. Coming up with three scores here in the fourth is not going to be an easy task. But that's good work there to bite off a chunk of yards. Allen's throw is complete. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball, and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run right down your throat. Yeah, he's going to be out down inside the 20 at the 15. 
11 more on that one and another first down. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores, want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. First down, here's the run with Cook. He takes us down to about the 12 for a gain of three. And quickly, they get to the line. On second down, here's Allen. I think this is what this game's become now. It just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Allen off the play fake. He will find Diggs in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. Stephon Diggs, his second touchdown of the night. And the Bills go 98 yards and finish it off in the end zone. The fourth quarter touchdown there, back to a two-score game, but time is not their ally. No, it's not, partner. They still have a pulse, but it's probably a little weak right now. A lot of things have to go right in these final two minutes plus for them. I think they have to be thinking onside kick here, and we know how difficult those are to recover. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Dolphins are going to recover. The fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. 114 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Well, at this stage, that's exactly what you want offensively. Good run on first down. Stay in bounds. Keep that clock rolling. And look at that play chart that the play caller has in his hands right now. That's what you got to focus in on because that's divided up by sections. And right now, he's looking at that four-minute offense section. What running plays do we have to bleed down the clock and take care of the football? Right now, they're executing really well. Another run on second down. Try to cover up. And now we'll see a timeout used on defense as they stop it right out of the break with 1.57 to go in the ballgame. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Running the counter with Mostert. will use the second of their timeouts and they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. A good chance now to put this game on ice. This is first and goal. Here's Mostert. And this time they were ready for him as he's taken down at the line of scrimmage. Let's go. Let's go. 
So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And running room hard to come by here. He gets it down to the eight. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. I'm assuming they're keeping this football on the ground, right? I would think so, because you're looking at the clock. That's in your favor. You look at the geography of the field, right, where you are. That's in your favor as well. Keep it on the ground. Keep pounding. Run that clock down. You got everything working in your direction. From the eight, it's third and goal. They'll run with Mostert. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. Call it a gain of five, but still a decent ways from the end zone now on fourth and goal. But well, a spotlight hit him once already tonight as he got into the end zone. He was trying to make it a double spotlight, wasn't he? But credit the defense, bottling him up, not letting him get in for the second score there. And no hesitation about this decision here. Confidently, they're going to go for this. Fourth and goal from the three. They're going for it. Here's Tua with it. And he's brought down. Can't do anything with a football. It's a sack and a turnover on downs. He couldn't get the ball away on fourth and goal. And the Bills' goal line stand is going to get him the football back. A breakdown by the O-line at the worst possible time. Fourth and goal, and it leads to a sack. And I can just see it now the, on the sidelines are telling the quarterback, you've got to get rid of it somehow, some way. At least get it in the end zone and give us a chance. If we throw an interception, so what? A sack? We didn't even have a chance. Here's first and ten. To throw is Allen. He's going to let it fly. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Give him big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. They'll come up now on second down. Allen. And this one is incomplete. If this offense can't get it done, they'll think back to just a few plays and say to themselves, this was a winnable game and we let it get away. Still a chance to save it, but time's definitely running out. This definitely four down territory at this point, but a critical third down here. Now Allen. It throws it on the move, but can't connect as that ball is incomplete. And now defensively in the two-minute drill, the big key to me, make sure you understand your assignments, and anytime you get a chance to tackle someone in bounds, get them on the ground. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And that will be incomplete. As time has run out on this football game. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins. And we talk so much about the turnover battle, determining who wins, who loses. This game, no exception. Air-free football, no turnovers at all, and they win it. So this is one you don't have to convince your team that what you're saying is accurate. And you know what I'm talking about. Head coach always stands up in front of the team and says, guys, if we do this, this, and this, we'll win. And usually they say, if we win the turnover battle, we'll win. Well. Here's the proof right there. Win the turnover battle, go on to victory. Now the guys believe you move on to the next lesson where you have to convince them. This one is now planted. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Dolphins are winners here as we say so long from South Florida.